This video is entitled Padding Border and Margins and is a companion piece to the book So You Want to Learn to Use HTML and CSS, specifically Chapter 6. I'm James Imrano, PhD, and I'll be taking you through this video presentation. So in this video, I'm going to talk about padding, borders, and margin, and specifically the box model within CSS. I'm going to show how to set paddings and margins, either with a single statement or individually set the padding or margin on each individual side. I'm also going to show you how to create a border of some kind of decorative line or something around an HTML element and set the different types of borders, colors, and widths of borders that are available. Okay, the first concept that I want to introduce in this video is the idea of the box model. Within HTML and CSS specifically, our content is wrapped in padding. Our padding is then in a border and our border then has a margin around the border. And within CSS, you can specify these various bits of absolutely every, for every element on your HTML page. Um, remember that there are some elements that are phrasing elements that um, setting these might not show correctly without changing them to inline block. But um, again, content is whatever's in the HTML tag. The padding is the space around it, and it would be the same background color as the, as the uh, element, as the content is. There's the border, which is the line around it, and then there's the padding, which is, or the margin, which is the space around it that's the color of what's underneath it, the transparent color by default. So Content has padding around it, has border around that, and has margin around that. Let's look at the styles to set padding and margin. There are four different versions of each of the padding and margin um, styles, and I'm just going to show you all, all, all of these together on one slide. Um, and I have the acronym in my head, TRB, a TBRL, a treble. Um, TBRL, that's kind of how I remember it. But if you specify padding with one dimension, that padding will be used all the way around. If you specify a padding or a margin with two dimensions, the first dimension will be used top and bottom, and the second dimension will be used right and left. So if you give it a margin of five pixels, 10 pixels, then it'll have a margin of five pixels top and bottom and a margin of 10 pixels left and right and left. If you specify three values, which is something you don't see people do very often, but you can, it sets the top, bottom, and right padding or margin. And if you specify four values, not five values, you specify all four values, then you set the, the first value is top, bottom, right, and left. So uh, um, you can define the dimensions and the widths of all of the margin and padding and get it exactly wrapped up the way you want it in the right box. If you don't want to use the padding with multiple dimensions and you just want to set the right padding or you just want to set the bottom padding, you could all or the right margin, you could also do a padding dash top with one value or a margin dash right with one value. So there are some extra ways that you can specify the margins one at a time. The next style in the box um, box model that I want to talk about is the border style. And when you create a border, you have to define three parts of the border. First, you have to define how wide you want that border to be. Second, you define the style of the border. What kind of border do you want around the element? And then you need to specify the color of that border. So the three parts, width, line, thickness, and style. There are several built-in styles, and they are none hidden which would be no border, a hidden border, which would take up space in the box model but wouldn't be seen, a dotted border, which looks like dots, a solid border, which is a solid line, a groove border, 
which has a little 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 uh, line in the middle and kind of has a little groove effect a ridge border which 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 looks a little taller in the middle again a little line effect the inset border and the outset border um for most for for most uh, the groove or the ridge or the solid or or what most people use for borders but but you can choose any of those types of borders you want and then you put a third value out there, which is the color of the border. And you could use any style, any color, like you used in any of the color, background color statements um, for that color argument. You can also define one border if you want a border on the bottom, but nowhere else. You can define border bottom instead of border, but you still have to give it all three arguments. If you want to put a border left, border right, border top, you can do that. So let's look at virtually the same uh, HTML that we used for our last example, but this time I styled it completely differently. Um, the div in the header, which is the text that says box model, I've put a padding of 15 pixels all the way around. So inside the blue box, there's a, a padding around the text, 15 pixels all the way around. I've also added a three pixel groovy blue border a three pixel groove blue border around the so that would be the content the 15 pixel padding all the way around the three pixel border all the way around and then i created a margin and i gave it two values the first value is five pixels so top and bottom there's a five pixel dead space around the border and then the uh, right and left margins are set at 10%. So whatever the width of the page is, it would be 10%. So what's left is 80% inside or to the edge of the border. So the border from edge to edges is 80%. And then inside the border is 80% minus 3 pixels. And the text is then 80% what, 18 pixels or something of that sort as you come in from the right and left. But you can see how that margin kind of made that look kind of kind of neat. Um, let's look at the nav. So the nav, I said, well, let's just put a five pixel solid pink border around it so that we can see where the nav is. Sometimes when you're trying to figure out where your elements are and what you're doing and your basic layout. It might help to throw a border on things so that you can see where they are and where they extend as you're trying to refine and iterate your CSS. You know, I rarely sit down and write a CSS sheet, just write it from start to finish, and it works. Usually, I'll work on something, get it the way I want it, and then I'll work on something else and get it the way I want it, and then I'll work on a little bit over here and get it the way I want it, and darn, if that didn't break the previous one, i got to go back and fix it again. So it's an iterative process to come up with these. Um, and then look at the nav A. So that's all of the A tags within the nav. And I've said, okay, we'll display those as inline blocks. So they're inline but they have width and height and stuff. I set their widths to 10 EM so that every box is the width of approximately, the content inside is approximately the width of 10 capital letters M. Well, notice the Wall Street Journal is a whole lot more than 10 letters in length, but it, it fits because um, the width is 10 EM and Ms are big fat letters. Um, wide letters. Let's let's be correct with that. And then I put a one pixel solid black border around them so that it's easy to see. I put a five pixel padding inside the border and then a five pixel margin all the way around the border, which makes those even kind of feel like buttons sort of, don't they? Even though they're not, uh, we've kind of styled them to, to look that way. This is the HTML um, that I used in that box model uh, CSS that you saw in the previous previous slide. And, and you can see that we have our body with a header, with a div, and a nav, and it closes the header. And you can see how the, the plain HTML worked.
Well, this concludes yet another of the videos in this series. This presentation is copyright 2020 by me, James M. Reno, Ph.D. You can contact me at jim at rnejm.com if you find any errors or omissions or, or if you have any suggestions. I'd love to hear them. Remember, this work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, share-alike, 4.0, international license, and I would like to say thank you for uh, watching another.